Welcome back, friends. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Jess. This is Michigan Crime Time. And I am not an attorney. I am not making any legal conclusions, nor giving any legal advice. All comments are my opinion, irregardless of any verbiage that I may use. All persons are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law, and my videos are not the official record of the court. So today we're actually going to go visit an older case, and this is involving Judge Simmons out of Lansing. Well, it's Ingham County District Court. Uh, this guy is willfully ignorant, willfully choosing to not understand um, the DV case. He is a bit belligerent. Um, I don't know, Judge Simons kind of lays the law down with him and honestly is kind of impressive because she seems to be such a meek and mild judge in every other video that I've ever seen of her. So anyways, let's get over to the courtroom in Lansing and let's check this case out. On the record in the matter of the people of the state of Michigan versus Bill Cruz Valdez, Council of Appearance. Good morning, Assistant Public Defender for Mr. Valdez, who is here for his arraignment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see yourself on the. Yep. Okay, Mr. Valdez, how are you? Good, yourself. I'm doing well, thank you. Today was the date and the time set for arraignment. I do have a felony complaint here. It alleges that on or about April 29, 2023, at the address of 1016 Kelsey Avenue, City of Lansing, Ingham County, State of Michigan, that you did contrary to law commit the act in count one of police officer assaulting, resisting, obstructing. The allegation is that you did assault, batter, wound, resist, obstruct, oppose, or endanger Officer Rebecca Hare, a police officer of the Lansing Police Department that the defendant knew or had reason to know was performing his or her duties contrary to Michigan Compile Law 750.81D1. That's a felony. The maximum penalty is two years and or $2,000 in fines and a consecutive sentence may be imposed under MCL 750.506A if the assault was committed in a place of confinement. There is a, or under MCL 750.81D6 for another violation arising from the same transaction. There is a count two police officer assaulting, resisting that alleges that you did assault, batter, wound, resist, obstruct, oppose, or endanger officer Michael Fomby a police officer of the Lansing Police Department that the defendant knew or had reason to know was performing his or her duties contrary to MCL 750.81D1. Again, that's a felony. Maximum penalty, two years and or $2,000 in fines. A consecutive sentence may be imposed under MCL 750.506A if the assault was committed in a place of confinement or under MCL 750.81D6 for another violation arising from the same transaction. There's a count three of attempted peace officer disarming non-firearm. It alleges that you did attempt to commit the following listed offense and in the attempt did act towards the commission of that offense, but failed in the perpetuation or was prevented in the execution thereof. And that was done contrary to MCL 750.92. And that is take a taser from the law lawful possession of Rebecca Hare, a peace officer with the Lansing Police Department, contrary to Michigan Compiled Law 750.479B1. This is a high court misdemeanor, maximum penalty two years or $1,000 in fines upon conviction of an attempted felony. The court shall order law enforcement to collect DNA identification profiling sampling. There's a count four of domestic violence that alleges that you did make an assault or an assault and battery upon a Roberta Baldillas, a resident or former resident of your household or your spouse, and that this was contrary to Michigan Compiled Law 
Restitution may be ordered as this offense may have resulted in damage to another individual's property or physical injury or death to another individual. That count four is a misdemeanor with the maximum penalty of 93 days in jail and of $500 in fines and a consecutive sentence may be imposed under the law if the assault was committed in a place of confinement. There is, however, a second offense notice. It says, take notice that the defendant was previously convicted of assaulting or assaulting and battering his or her spouse, former spouse, an individual with whom he or she had a dating relationship, an individual with whom she had a child in common, or a resident or former resident of his or her household, or of knowingly assaulting a pregnant individual by violating MCL 750.812, on or about January 6, 2012, and therefore upon conviction will be subject to an enhanced sentence under MCL 750.814 that makes uh, count for a misdemeanor maximum penalty one year and or $1,000 in fines. Account five of assault or assault and battery alleges that you did make an assault or assault and battery upon the following person that being a Sebastian Slater, and that that was contrary to Michigan Compiled Law 750.811. Restitution may be ordered as this offense may have resulted in damage to another individual's property or physical injury or death to another individual. Uh, this is a misdemeanor maximum penalty, 93 days in jail and or $500 in fines. Again, a consecutive sentence may be imposed under the law if the assault was committed in a place of confinement. Mr. Valdez, do you understand the charges and the maximum penalty associated with each charge? Yes. You have the right to be represented by counsel. You are represented by the Public Defender's Office today for the purposes of your arraignment only. You have the right to have an attorney to represent you at each stage of the criminal prosecution, and you have the right to have an attorney to represent you if you're questioned by law enforcement. If you cannot afford to hire an attorney, you have the right to make a request for public defense counsel to represent you at the expense of the public. Do you understand your right to counsel? Yes, ma'am. Is he making a request for for appointed counsel? He is. Okay, Mr. Valdez, you have the right to remain silent. Anything that you say and anything you put in writing can be used against you. You have the right to plead guilty. You can plead not guilty or you can stand mute. Uh, you are being charged with felonies, so you have the right in this matter to proceed to preliminary examination. And you have the right to have your preliminary examination within 21 days of today's date, that being your date of arraignment. That timeline of 21 days can only be extended if you waive the 21 days or if the court finds good cause to go beyond the 21 day timeline. You have the right at your preliminary examination to require the prosecution to establish that they have sufficient probable cause that a crime was committed and probable cause sufficient to charge you with the crimes. Do you understand your right so far? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you have the right in this matter to proceed to trial and you have the right to jury trial. At the time of trial, you have the right to the presumption of innocence. So you're innocent until the prosecution can prove you guilty and you have the right to have them prove each element of each of the charges being brought against you at trial beyond a reasonable doubt. You understand those rights? Yes, ma'am. You have the right to call witnesses to speak for you at trial. You have the right to uh, present evidence at trial that you believe would further a defense to the charge. You have the right to confront, see, hear, or question any other witnesses the prosecution intends to call. You have the right to remain silent at trial and not have silence be used against you. Do you have any questions about your trial rights? No. We're currently scheduled for a probable cause conference, and that's before Judge Cynthia Ward, and it's going to be May 12th, 2023, at 8.30 in the morning. You have a preliminary examination scheduled uh, before Judge Ward in person at the court May 19th, 2023, at 8.30, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. So your probable cause can be held via Zoom or you can appear in person, but your preliminary examination, you must appear in person. Did you get a copy of the notice to appear, sir? No. You did not sure. yet? No, it's, it's in front of you. Yes, you got it, sir. It's right there. What is it? You know, it's, it's the purple piece of paper, sir. I guess so. 
Okay, very good. Okay. Are we currently on probation, parole, or out on bond on another matter? No. no. Okay, were you recently on probation, sir? I, um, I've been on, I've been on probation, but that was like uh, six, eight years ago. Okay, you weren't on probation in October twenty twenty two. No. Okay, you can address bond counsel. Thank you, Mister. Oh, sorry, and the court will enter a plea of not guilty on his behalf. Thank you, Mr. Bald Diaz represents that he's lived in Lansing for over a year with his family, his wife, his two minor kids, and his adult child also lives here with him. He is a veteran of seven years with the U.S. Army and was honorably discharged and also is on VA assistance, so he does not have a, a nine-to-five job. He told me that he hasn't had um, recent serious convictions, and he also understands that there may be a no contact order with the alleged victims here, and will have to stay away from these people. I believe um, it may be a family member, and he understands that. He promises to appear for court. He told me that he's always appeared in his prior matters and plans to appear if released. He would request a PR bond with the understanding that he cannot talk to any complaining witnesses, engage in any assaults or harassing behavior, and must appear at court when he is supposed to, like he's indicated he has a record of doing and we would ask for a PR bond. Thank you. Mr. Badi, are you, are you currently employed? No. Okay, and that address on Kelsey, that's your home address? Yes. And you do not yet have an address where you would stay during the pendency of this matter? The only address I got to stay at this matter is in Purim, Oklahoma. Okay. Well, one of your if I can't go back and see if I, if I can't go back and see her, then Oklahoma is the only way I got. If you can't go back and see who? The alleged victim? My, my wife and my children. Okay. Well, there's going to be a no contact order in place for the protection of the alleged victims. It looks like uh, one of them is uh, there's an allegation of one victim being your wife. And then there's an allegation of another victim. Oh no, I think this is a this is a family member. A wife and a is it your stepson? Yeah, he swung at me, no, so I swung back. Okay. Well, we're gonna stop you because I don't want you to say anything on the record that could be used against you. Um, and to the extent that you believe you have a lawful defense, you'll discuss that in private with your counsel, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh there's gonna be a no protect uh, no contact order and protection of those two parties pending this matter, but there also is gonna be an order that you, you're not to leave the estate without prior approval of the court. Yeah. So going to Oklahoma would not be an option for- I have no other options besides living on the street. And I'm not okay. doing that. I'm a soldier and I do not, I do not deserve that. Okay. I gave my almost gave my life for this country, and now this is going on I over some cats that didn't even belong to okay, us. Okay, Mr. Valdez, you don't want to say any more because now is not the time. Okay. Okay, well, we are dealing with some serious allegations here, sir. It's not even just allegations of a situation involving your home, uh, but there was, there are at least two 
counts of that you're being charged with for assaulting or resisting an officer, two separate officers, and then an allegation that you attempted to disarm an officer. So this is a serious interaction uh, that's being alleged here. This is not just an action involving some cats as alleged, okay? I swung, I swung at him in eight now, uh, Mr. Well, Mr. Sir, well, it is. now it's not the time. Okay. Uh, you said he's engaged with the VA right now? Yes. Okay. Um, is, he, is he receiving any um, services through the VA at this time? I'm not sure. Are you receiving any services? Yeah, I get like $880. No, I mean like any services as it relates to um, counseling or treatment or anything like that? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I've, I've never had to ask him for anything. This has always happened. And the judge right at the beginning told me that uh, you stay out of trouble and be good and told me to leave his room. So I did. Definitely need an address of where you're going to stay. And you said, you, what's in Oklahoma? You say you're from my, Oklahoma? Yes, my mother lives there and my brothers. I'm the only one that lives out of state. Gotcha. Okay, Bond will be setting the amount of 2,500 personal recognizance with GPS tether. While out on Bond, you need to appear for all of your future court dates. You've been provided your next two court dates so far. You're not to have any contact directly or indirectly with uh, Roberta Valdez or Sebastian. Do you understand that? Yeah, but how am I supposed to get my clothes? Well, do you understand that there's a no contact order first? How am I supposed to get clothes? Yes, I, I, I answered you, ma'am. I said yes, but now I'm asking how am I supposed to get my clothes and my belongings? Okay, you can make arrangements for that, but it can involve you having contact directly or indirectly with those two parties. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. I still don't understand yeah. how I'm supposed to get my clothes. Okay. Well, can we'll I make can I ask you to leave and that way she's there by herself? That way I'm there by myself and I can grab my stuff and leave? You can make arrangements to have law enforcement accompany you there. And I don't like law enforcement. I don't okay. like law enforcement. Well, that's, that's why I'm asking if I, if I can ask her to leave, can I go over there by myself, grab my stuff, and get out of her house? No, you can't ask her to leave because you can't have contact with her. So you don't understand the no contact order. Then. Yes, I do understand the contour, ma'am, but how am I supposed to get my clothes? M Mr. Baldias, the judge is trying to explain that you're going to have to, if you want to get out of jail and get your stuff, you're going to have to have law enforcement come with you. That's the only way. It's normal. I don't and trust any of them. I don't trust any of them. After them two pulled a gun on me, I don't trust any of them. Well, the alternative, unfortunately, would be to stay in jail. And I know we don't want to see that happen. And then she said I reached for her pepper spray, even though she now, was on now top not of the my time head. to talk about it. I'm just going to give you one last warning just to um, un say, just answer the judge's questions, if you understand them. What's the judge's name? My name is Judge Kristen Simmons. Okay, that's all I need. I'm sorry? That's all I needed. Okay, are you ready for me to, con to continue? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You're not to be within 1,500 feet of wherever uh, Roberta Baldez is or Sebastian Slater. Do you understand that? Yeah, I reckon. You're not to possess a firearm or any other dangerous weapon while you're on probation. I'm sorry, while you're out on bond, uh, you're not to be within. You're not to be at the address. Of, while the. Oh, OK, well, that's not the address, so I will go to my house. That's my neighbor's address. And I can tell her she can take the kids to the park or something like that. So I can okay, get well, it's, it's apparent. It's apparent that he's not going to follow court orders. So your bond, yes, your, bond, no, your, bond gonna... your bond is set at 5,000 cash surety, GPS tether, and victim notification. I'm not going to go back and forth with you about bond conditions and how you can get around the bond conditions. I'm not going to make arrangements for you to get your clothes. That's your business. It's not mine. I'm going to tell you how the court order is going to run and you figure it out. Okay. But okay. I, and I'm also not going to go back and forth with you. Okay. This is not Mr. Baldia's court, okay? It's not what he wants. 
No, but when do I get to speak? Well, on my you know, you've been speaking the whole time. You've been speaking the whole no, entire time. Been... And if you keep if you keep going back with me, you can speak to the to the magistrate tomorrow and I'll remand you. And then what? I can remand you and you can speak to the magistrate tomorrow if you know if you want to keep going back and forth. If I can't conduct an arraignment, I'm gonna discontinue it, okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Oh, so I'll watch my mouth, no one. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, the bond. What, what is your home address? I actually was at the address on Kelsey Street. This paperwork says. It's, is that not your yeah. address? No. You're not to be with at the address. City of Lansing, Ian County, State of Michigan. I had already told you not to be wherever the victims live, uh, work, or go to school. So, even if the address was mis was misstated on the paperwork. Uh, that doesn't give you the right to go to the address. That'd be in violation of the no contact order. You understand that that's still a bond violation, correct? Can I contact my family and have them pick up my stuff from them, which I have no family, but can I, can I have someone please get my stuff? I'm walking, yeah, I'm walking yeah. around in which your officers threw me in mud and then forced my face into the mud and then threatened to pull a taser gun on me. No, I have heart conditions. I'm a VA rep. I'm a VA re uh, veteran. It's hard for me to understand some things when I don't make I don't make sure of what that is. I don't know what it is that I've done wrong. Okay, I'm not I'm not disputing that you're not sure as how you got here or what you you're not sure what you did that was in violation of law. That's not the dispute. What I'm asking if you understand the bond conditions, that's what I need to know, okay? You can figure out how you got here with your attorney in private and not on the record where you're stating things that are under that are being recorded and can be used against you, okay? That's not the appropriate time. Excuse me? So I understand. Okay. And so uh, the no contact order, uh, you have to be within 1,500 feet. If who could you potentially call to other than these two protected parties to get your things? In Oklahoma, I have no family here. I have nobody here but my wife and children. They're the only ones okay. I know besides you, me and all. If your family is able to come up from Oklahoma and, and want arrangements to be made for them to have third party contact to get your things, then you talk to your attorney uh, and they'll make sure that the court addresses any orders that will prohibit third party contact for that purpose. As of right now, the only provision is that you may go with law enforcement to the address to one time to receive your personal items, okay? That's your option. Also while out on bond, you're not to possess firearm or any other dangerous weapon. You're not to engage in any assaultive or threatening behavior. You're not to uh, leave the state without prior approval of the court. You need to report to pretrial services within 48 hours of your release, okay? Yes. Okay. Your bond is 2,500 cash surety with GPS tether. Any additional matters for the record? What does that mean? I'll explain that to you. You're all set, sir. Thank you. Okay. Not this way, sir. Your Honor. Yes. May I get clarification on that? Is it 2,500 yes. cash surety, 2,500 PR, or 5,000 cash 2,500 cash surety. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. So, you guys... I warned you, willfully not understanding what the judge is saying. I think he understands perfectly fine how he's not to go to the house, how he's not... I, I think he understands completely. I think he is being purposely ignorant and belligerent. Anyways, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button in the description, you'll find the links to my merch shop if you want some official Michigan Crime Time swag. 
There's also the links to join membership if you want to help further support my channel. Uh, as you know, many of my videos do get demonetized, so any help is appreciated. The free ways you can help is by hitting that like, subscribe, and share button. With that said, Chimigwitch, thank you for joining me, and I will catch you next time.